I bought a Raspberry Pi and in today's video, we're going to set this up. I'm going to cover the software installation, show you how to remote desktop into these. And finally, we're going to play around and see what we can do with this thing. To get started, we're going to have to install the Raspberry Pi OS onto our SD card. Now I may do with what I had, so I had a micro SD, put it into the adapter, and then that fit into a very old laptop that I had. I could then install the OS using this. However, use what you have available. If you don't have any such devices to do this, you can pick up a micro SD card reader on Amazon for around $15. We're then gonna do a Google search for Raspberry Pi installer. Click on the first official link. We're gonna go ahead and download the installer for the operating system that we have. Go ahead and install the application and run the Pi installer. The screen will look like this. We're gonna go ahead and select our device. So we are using the Raspberry Pi 4. Our operating system, so we wanna use the 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS. For storage, select your SD card. It's showing blank here because I haven't actually plugged this into my PC. I don't have a reader and I'm too lazy to plug this into here and record and <sighs> just trust me, it will look like this. Once you're done with that, click on next. There will be a settings icon in the bottom right hand corner. You wanna go ahead and click on that, which will bring up this prompt. We want to go ahead and enable SSH access, set a username and password. This is incredibly important as it will allow us to remote into our Raspberry Pi once we have set this up. Finally hit save and click on write. Now that we're done with installing the operating system, let's go ahead and set up the hardware. To assemble this, we've got our SD card it goes in the back slot and it faces outwards like that and it will just slot into place. Now a little bit of it will hang over the edge and that is fine. Next, we're gonna give it some power which is USB-C and plugs into this slot over here, just on the corner. Straight away, you'll notice two little lights. That means it is on. There is no on or off switch with the Raspberry Pi 4. As soon as you plug the power in, it's on. I'm then gonna give it a keyboard and a mouse, which slot into our USB ports here. And finally, the micro HDMI cable, which we can plug in a monitor, goes into, there are two slots, but the instructions say to use this one, the one closest to the power cable. Fun fact, you also have to power your Raspberry Pi on first before connecting this, otherwise there's no image that'll get sent to your screen which is good to know because I was marking around for 20 minutes trying to figure out why I couldn't get an image on my monitor. Um, it's in the instructions, make sure you read those. And if you've done everything correctly, you should have a Linux system up and running that you can access. Now, we could go ahead and use that setup that we have with the monitor, keyboard and mouse to essentially set up our Raspberry Pi, but that's a bit too easy. And if you're following along, you may not have peripherals just laying around. So I'm gonna show you a cool way where we can set everything up remotely. When we imaged our Raspberry Pi through that imaging software, we enabled SSH access with the username and password combination, which means we should be able to SSH into that Raspberry Pi from our local PC. We're gonna go ahead and open up a terminal window, and then we're gonna simply type in SSH, the username that we created, so for me it was dolding, at, and then we're gonna get the host name. So I changed it from Raspberry Pi to home.local. Put in our password, and we're in. We can now access our Raspberry Pi remotely through SSH. When I first set this up, connecting via the host name didn't work. I suspect it took a while to propagate through my internal network. So if you can't resolve that DNS name from your PC, here is a way to get the IP address and use that directly. There's a great app called Thing that you can download directly from the App Store. And essentially it will scan your entire home network for all devices connected to your Wi-Fi. And from within here, we can see the IP address assigned to our Raspberry Pi. So we can go ahead and do the exact same thing. We can do SSH username at and instead of the DNS name, we are going to put in the IP address that has been assigned to it. And again, put in your password. And we're in. 
SSH is handy, but sometimes you want a full-blown desktop user interface. Thankfully, Raspberry Pi comes with VNC pre-installed, so we're going to go ahead and enable that remotely so that we can access the entire graphical user interface from our PC. So we're going to go ahead and run this command from our shell terminal. What do we want? Navigate to interfaces. VNC. Would you like it to be enabled? Yes. Before we can connect, we need to download a VNC client. So we're going to go ahead and download the recommended Tiger VNC. Head over to the downloads page. Downloads are available from the GitHub releases pages. So we'll click on that link. We're going to go to the latest one and we're going to click on their binaries link. Go ahead and download the latest. We're going to run through the installation guide, just go with all of the defaults. For some reason it's not coming up when I search for it, so I had to go to the folder directly. We'll go ahead and launch the program. Uh, so I'm guessing this is going to be our DNS name, so we'll go home.local. And we're going to select options, basically just following the instructions to always show a cursor. And go ahead and click connect. Doesn't have a certificate, yes, we will continue. Do we want to, yes. All right, username and password. So type in our uh, username and password. And we are connected remotely into our Raspberry Pi. That was pretty cool. We managed to set up our Raspberry Pi 100% remotely. I'm gonna end the video here. I'm gonna make these smaller bite-sized pieces of content so it's easier for people to follow along. In the next one, we're gonna do some home automation. We're gonna set up Home Assist. We're also gonna look at using this Raspberry Pi as a media server as well, which I think will be exciting. If you guys have any ideas or would like to see something in particular set up on the Raspberry Pi, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.